Hey, so this is Mordecai. And I am on my way right now to Spring Hill, Florida. For a very important documentary. Don't miss this one. Stay tuned. this place this is Tito from Puerto Rico I am Mordecai Tito is like one of the best over here or the best he's been raising pigeons for a long time how long you been raising pigeons uh, 50 years 50 years Wow and that's your loft yes down there. I'm excited to see it let's go let's go, let's go. Wow so you know the, man these birds are beautiful all the blue bars are all hovens. All the blue bars, they're all hovens. Are you going to let them out now? No, no, they don't, I'm, they can't, I can't let them out, no. Beautiful. And these are all males. These are all males. You scared them. Okay, these are all males. The sewers are Jim Kalia Jensen's. And I got blue bar Jensen's here. And I got red checkers. They're all to the same family, Jim Kalia Jensen from some California. What is the most money you ever made uh, with pigeon raising? About, I don't make that much. I just do it for the fun of it. Between close to 10,000. Wow. Yeah. But um, I do it for the sport, you know. I'm, I almost win it a couple of times to win $50,000, but well, I didn't have the luck for it. I lost the race in 2016. Um, I got five birds in the, in the, in the top money. And I lost the race by a minute and 16 seconds. Wow. You see, it happens, you know? So that, yeah, it was very close. Yeah, I almost win it. The only problem is that she circled around and then she dropped. And all the blue balls you see there, they're all the same family of pigeons. I got that the same family of pigeons since 2009. And they do good for me. They win races in, in this big club. I'm in the GEC club, you know? Now, this year I'm going to fight the GEC club and the FSI club. So let me ask you, how far uh, did that pigeon? Flew uh, to win. What, what? How far are the races? That oh, 300, 350 miles for young birds, and mm -hmm. 600 miles for old birds. Wow! How many birds you have? I got a couple. I got about 80, 83 young birds. You know, I like those uh, white head with the little tie and the white flight, blue bars and blue checkers. I love, I love that combination of colors. Yeah. See me, I'm like a color guy. <laughs> I like I like color. I like whites, but you know, again, I don't race. I don't race. Yeah. No, this 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 one right here, the 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 red and white with that's, the that's a, that's a dropper. It's, it's a dropper. Yeah, yeah, that's a dropper. Yeah. And uh, how, how many droppers you have here? I got a whole bunch of. You want? He's gonna see now. You want to see? Come on. Yeah, sure, sure. And we're here now, inside of the loft. And uh, look all the medicine. Now, you know, to have pigeons, you, you have to first learn all the diseases, you know, and, and what cures the diseases. I know that when I used to have pigeons, I used to give them the power mix of virus uh, injection every year. Then I used to look for okay. canker. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Give them vitamins. Look at this. Vitamins, medicine still in here. This is what he's talking about. Oh, the PMB, your PMB injection, you jacked up the bird. That, that's that's from the power, power mixes. See by PMB. So the birds, oh. are, you see the birds don't get that that, that twisted neck and everything. Yeah, yeah. It's a disease that don't have no cure. You but I, kill I used bird. to do it once a year. Yes, once a year. Yeah, once yeah. a year. Yeah. 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 All the medicines I have here. I don't remember. See, like all these medicines here, the birds get the birds get the birds get cold water in the afternoon. You see, cold water. They Very drink good. afternoon Very because good. it gets really hot. Very healthy birds. Very healthy birds. Look, let me show you something. 
And you give him ginseng. Look at that. Yeah, everything. Wow. Yeah. This, this, this is what I do. Look at the medicine I buy for the birds. Look. Look. Look at that. Wow. Medicine. I don't know. Give me that. All this is medicine. Look. All this is all medicine for pigeons. Look. See? It costs money to take care of birds. Oh, yes. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yes. You give it baking soda water one, one, one once a week. Once a week. You never get conquered in here. Right, right. Once a you week. You know. I got, Beautiful. I got all this here, all this medication here. Mm -hmm. See, up to the bottom medication. I, I spend money, but I want to win. That's of course. Mean. You don't Tito. pay. You don't pay the lottery. You don't win. So <laughs> these over here are the droppers. These are my droppers. I got, Beautiful. I, I, got, I, got, I, got black, I got black rollers. Look. Oh my gosh. Black so the, was that Birmingham rollers? Um, yeah. No, I don't know what they are. I got them. Um, I think they are Birmingham rollers. Black rollers made up. Beautiful. See, you don't try in one. Sí, sí, sí. Ay, yo sé, yo sé, yo sé. Yo sé, yo sé. No, pero mira, esta chancleta yo no voy a estar dentro de mi casa. Mira, mira, pichones, son pichones todo este año, 20, 20 pichones, mira. ¿Viste? Beautiful. Sí. Me coge uno para que lo vea. Ok. Do you compete with the rollers? You know, this competition with the rollers. Yeah, but I, I, I can do that. Those are my wife's. Oh. She fly pigeons too. These are hers. Yeah, that's a beautiful girl. And um, she has a, uh, she likes the triplets. I agree with you. I'm a pigeon guy. Just I, I haven't had pigeons in a little while now because uh, we have to move. As soon as I move, you know, I'm going to have pigeon again. Like I say, this is my dream. The little hen. See? She's full of, she's, she's that that one compete already? She, yeah, it's classic last year. It's a little scared because they don't know me. No, no, it's, it's like she wants to fly. Uh -huh. Yeah. Flying is later, not now. She's from Canada. She's 2000, 2018. Canada. The Canada. Canada, look. Misty. From a friend of mine from Canada. He put the bread from her to the classic. You know? She did, she did, she did good. I still have her in case he sees the video. Yeah. And she flies good. Nice little hand. Let me get a youngster. You can see the youngster. Okay. Ve como está tapado mi salud. Chacho, se ve, se ve fuerte. La salud, la salud es muy importante. Ahora puede entrar porque el pie todo pico de pico. Okay, okay. So now we're going in because my feet are clean. Okay. Ah, está aquí. Okay, okay. Okay, yes sir. Gracias. That's a baby. Look, that's out of my youngsters. That's the Hoven. See? Did he compete yet? No, the youngster. 2020. Oh. He's all babies in here. Except oh. the except the hen that So so when would they be ready to compete? September. September mm. 18 is the first race. So the first race, how far they fly? 100 miles. Okay, and how many races you have in the year? Um, ten, or, ra ten races. Wow. And it, it gradually, you know, goes farther and farther, right? Yeah, yeah miles go. Keep on adding up. Look at that. So that's one. That's my. That's my one of my one of my baby's favorites. I got there. See that beautiful bird? Let me grab him. The blanco que tu viste ahí, el gris, que es el papá de que te gusta a ti allá. Oh, really? Yeah, it's beautiful. Black and white one right there on top of the brick. That's a man. That's a beautiful bird. That's the father of the grizzly. I like the eyes and I like the beak that is black. Mm -hmm. You know. Now that white one right there, I'm I'm, I'm gonna tell you because I I'm I know whites. That white one right there is a sticklebout. See that white wood bird right there? Yeah. Because it's got the black eyes. Well, let me let me ask you something if you don't mind. I see this big, huge loft over there. What is that? That's big Andy, one love race. Oh, they do one love race. Yeah. Oh, and, and there is another loft over there too? Yeah. This is another house? Yeah, the house, the house right there is a, is a, is a two floor house. The bottom is the, is the breeding coop and the top is the flying coop. Beautiful. So Tito, these are your awards for your birds. This is all, this is all the GAC. Races, except this one. This bird was the one that got came in first place. Um, 
I think in, in Sarasota. But wow. I, I got I flew in Sarasota. I flew in a Port Charlotte club, and these are all the GAC club races. I won three first places. I came in ninth. I mean eighth and tenth in the classic. You see me in the corner there. Wow. In 2016, I got five birds in the front page. I made good money. Um, Man, you're the best. I'm trying. Look at this. Look all this trophies. Yeah. Oh. Out of, out, of, out, of all, out, of, out of all the trophies I threw away because, you know, they, they don't do nothing. They just bring yeah, I know, I know. They collect uh, dust. Yeah, and, so what I throw yeah. away, I keep, I keep what I like. So, but that's not all, but I see more here. You got you, you have yeah. a whole wall. Yeah, that's... um. That's Look at a, this. That, that you have a light here? No, no, thank you. See, the bang you better. Um, you have a whole wall here full of awards and... Yeah, and all... And all, all, all Every, every single one that is in a boom because the cat knocked it down. Wow. Oh, look, more. Huh. These are all from the GAC club, the second places and the third places in this war. I'm missing some more because the cat's not the cat knocks it down. This was yeah. full. She didn't see the nails. It was full yeah. of diplomas. She the cat keeps knocking him down because he jumps up. And look all this right here. It is all from the GAC uh. club. You see, and you to fly in that club, that's one of and the best. And each of those diplomas is one race. One race. Wow. Yeah. You see, I have more here and here in the bottom, and he, the cat knocks it down. <laughs> so wait a minute, uh, I see uh, more. Uh, you got more, in the, yeah, in this whole house. Is, 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 um, the, what? The, the that wall over there, that wall you, you're taking right now? Yes, that, sir. That's all from the, from the, from the Port Charlotte Club. That's how I beat your, uh, Otani. Okay, Otani Pagada, he made a campeón aquí. Oh, I know him, I know him. Yeah, that's, that's being a champion. Wow, and that guy has good pigeons. He don't got nothing if I beat him. You beat him? Yeah. Wow, so man, I'm telling you, you're the best. Listen, let me tell you something right now. Um, it's like, you know, you're not competing against uh, any against bombs. You're competing against world-class people. Yeah, here, yeah, yeah, here now. You know? Because down there, down there, and in, in, in those small clubs down there, there's only like 10 members to 15 members. That's oh, really? It, that's it. Over oh. here, there's over 100 members. Oh, man, so I thought I, I was going to buy pigeons over there. So I'm just going to come over here and buy pigeons. Yeah. I, I'm not going to buy pigeons over there. Might help you. Please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in the wall. And here are more diplomas. Yeah. See? First place. First place. <laughs> wow. Yeah. All the diplomas I got here. I, got, I even got movies in here. Look, all the diplomas I got to hang back up. Wow. Because they, they drop, they fall off because the cat, the cat jumps up and he breaks them. Look all the diplomas. Look at that. I got, I got. I These are all certified. Certified, uh, yeah. From the, yeah, from the club in the AU. Association. Look at that. Look at that. You see, it's all this I got to hang up again, and and and, and that tells you how good I am and how good uh, my birds are. Your birds are great, man. You know, I, I've been raising, uh, well, having pigeons since uh, 1968. And I, I, I know a good birds when I see them, you know. Yeah. I can tell them, I mean, your birds are muscular, you know. Yeah, they're them, they're them light. Them. They're not too big, you they're know. Medium, medium size. But they're, yeah. they're medium size, and, and the, that, that's the best. Let me close it down. I know, I'm sorry. Um, I, learned, I learned to fly pigeons with my father. Okay. In Puerto Rico? No, New York City. New York. I was born in New York. I'm New Yorkian. Uh -huh. But I was raised in Puerto Rico. You know, Mike Tyson had a lot of pigeons over there. He got, he got, those, he got those fancy birds. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he, he, got, got, yeah, he got, got the high flyers, the rollers, yeah, he you know. Fly. He don't have no good racing birds. I tried to talk to him, but he don't, he don't answer me back. Yeah. So, so I was going to give him a pair of birds, but you don't answer me back. You don't get nothing. Yeah. But no, he called me, I'll give it to him. I saw his documentary that he has. Uh, that he did with the homing pigeons, they, they let them go, and the pigeons came back, and he said, "Well, if we're gonna raise this time, it's not, it's not good enough, you know." But you know what? For me, me myself, this is just me. I I take his birds anytime <laughs> because I I'm I'm not into like raising, mm -hmm. you know. I just yeah, I just love pigeons, yeah, man. Got, I, no has, stress. Yeah. I just love to have, you know, well, my yeah. love, you know, uh, my loved. And this is uh, the flag of Puerto Rico. Yeah. For, where, where are you uh, from in Puerto Rico? I'm from Bayamón. Bayamón, Puerto Rico. Yeah. The Isla del Encanto. The Isla del Encanto. I have friends in, uh, I think it's Vega Baja. 
Eh, now friends in Aguadilla. You know. Yeah. Huh? Oye, que mando un saludo a la gente de Puerto Rico, mi gente ya que yo que me conocen a mí. Yo soy Tito Love de aquí de Florida, pero yo competí en el Puerto Rico Racing Pigeon Club, en el Bayamón Pigeon Club, cuando estaba Charlie Auto, cuando estaba um, um, unos cuantos que ya no están, pues ya ellos se fueron ya, Dios se lo llevó. Um, Cabrera, también, también competí contra él. Y yo conozco a, a Zuko, que lo conoce como Zuko, a Bushmaster, a Pedro, a Pedro Luis, toda esa gente yo lo conozco todo, son mi gente. Ok, yo lo bendiga y, y espero verlo pronto. Para clásico. Great. There's a lot of cooks in this place. This is Carla Lucci. Carla Lucci and she's got white homers. Now this this is a different twist because all of the other homers, they're all color homers. They use it for racing. These homers can be used to release in weddings, in funerals you know, uh, uh, graduation, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So Carla, how, how long you been with the White Homers? I've had them since 2001. Wow, what can you tell me about the White Homers? Oh, they're great birds. They're, uh, like you say, they're not racing birds, but they do mm -hmm. have the homing ability. So they do come home after you've released them for a wedding or, or a funeral. I did that business for 13 years uh, and would still be doing it if I didn't have medical problems. But yeah, it's a great world great world the pigeons are great I love it I love it you know I also have home in pigeons uh, oh. and I had a white and I used to do the, the same business Good. You used to yeah. do it just right now I can't do it because I live in a place where I have trees everywhere oh. there's a lot of hawks right. so we're looking to move so this is my dream because mm -hmm. this is called dream chases radio this is oh. my dream yeah. to have what you have right now, you know, and I will in, in the future. Yeah, so yeah. we're doing this documentary because a lot of people don't know that this even exists. You know, right. they think of pigeons as uh, flying rats, but they're not. Oh. You know, they're the best. Go ahead. They're the thoroughbreds of the sky. You treat them like you do racehorses, which I've had in the past also. And uh, you medicate them well, you feed them well, and they love their home, so they all come home and they, they're just a great life. It's, you know, they get to know you too. Oh yeah, yeah. They get to know you. I had mm -hmm. one named Bones and he used to come on my shoulder, yeah. on my hands, he used to eat from me. Yeah. You know. Yeah, they're like and, pets. They can be pets. And let me tell you, once you get a couple, mm -hmm. you know, I hear people say, oh, I'm just going to get a couple. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. You can. No. It's yeah. like they breathe and they breathe. And, you and they, need more room in your coops. So yeah. You build more coops. Yeah. We have five or six here. <laughs> so you have whites here. Yeah. How many yes. whites do you have right now? Uh, right now, just 15. I've cut back recently a little bit. Um, it's just, uh, for one thing, the heat, you know, it's, it's getting to me, so I have to watch yeah. that. It's but, hot. It's yeah. very hot. So I'm going to yeah. cut it short. I know okay. it, it's, we're in Florida. It's very hot. In the 90s. I'm sweaty. <laughs> you know, but can we go see the birds? Sure. Sure. Great. Okay. I would love to see him. Okay. These birds are really good. I like I like this white. physically on there. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't walk very well. These are great birds. I know birds and I love these birds. These are, I believe, stickleballs. See the eyes? Um, they have them, the white with the yellow eyes and mm -hmm. and, I, and the black beak. Mm -hmm. And I, I used to, because I had this and I used to say, man, I want some of that. Oh. But you know what? These are proof. I don't know the other birds what I can do. I know these birds, they fly okay, in the yeah. dark, they, they're 500 miles, 200 miles, mm. you know, yeah, yes. Uh, there, you know, Don Brumfield told me that he's got some friends in New York, oh. that he raised birds, he's got a, a white uh, champion, oh. 500 miles, wow. okay? Well, these race birds that Bob has, they'll go that far too. The one on that perch what? right, or in that nest, that nest right there is 12 years old. I can tell. Yes, he's 
My oldest breeder. Yeah, you can tell it's beautiful. I'll chase them in if you want, or you can go out and get them in there. I like, I like that one right there. That's a beautiful hand. Is that a hand? Uh, no. I don't think it's a, a male. It's, it's a male. Bird. It's a male. It's a male. Alright, baby. That's a hand. Yeah. That's a young bird. Very young. Yeah. Just, just coming into breeding age. Okay. Um, yeah, so you, you were saying about the pox. The pox is from a mosquito bite. Um, yep. At night, the mosquitoes will come into the coop. They'll get on their feet, wherever there's mm -hmm. no feathers on their beaks, and you'll see a, a, like a little pimple come up the next day or two. Well, I've used sulfur powder mm -hmm. for since I started this in 2001, and I've never had a pox on my birds. You wow. put, it, put it in the food or the grit, and they just eat it up. They don't care what it tastes like, and it's healthy for them for other things too. So uh, this is the answer for pox. I am going to. <laughs> yeah, I am going to remember that, and I'm going to give you another secret: okay. baking soda. You put it on the water once a week. Yeah. Very good. No canker. Oh, you will have no canker. No canker. Oh. Once a week, baking soda. You gave me that secret. I give you mine. Okay. But All now right. it's live, so it you know it's good. It I don't me. believe it's such a thing as secrets because yeah. it's going to help somebody else's right. bird. Somebody told me it's an old, yeah. old, old so, pigeon flyer. So I'm looking, I'm looking at, I love pigeons. Yeah. I want every breeder to know everything about every disease yeah. and every remedy. Bob does too, yeah. Yeah, father. because yeah. that way all the birds are healthy. Sure. You know, yeah, so, everybody. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much. You've been so kind. Let me hear. Sure. Uh, Come back anytime and I'll have some babies in January. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. January, February, I'll be here because I like these whites. These are good. You know. Okay. So this is uh, another raising loft with one of the finest birds over here in Spring Hill. At the request of the owner, I would not say his identity, but these birds are world class. Wow, they they look very healthy. They better be that garbage can gets filled up quick. <laughs> nice loft, nice loft. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> Beautiful. This is Mordecai, and I am here today in beautiful Spring Hill, Florida. And I'm, I'm here with Tom. I don't know Tom. I just met Tom yesterday, but I feel like if I know him forever. He's a very good host, a very friendly guy, and he has a lot of knowledge when it comes to pigeons. He has the best, the largest retail pet shop in the United States. They only sell pigeons and pigeon medicine, but he knows a lot more about, about this than me, so I, I'll let you talk about it. All right, good morning. I came from New York about uh, 15 years ago. I opened up a small little store to keep myself busy. And over the years, here I am. Wow. I got a store here, it's 20,000 square feet. I, I see. You have auto medicine. Um, the reason in the store here pertains to fitness. The reason why I'm here, Tom, is because my dream is to one day have a loft as big as that one outside with a lot of pigeons. I did it before, I had it before, I had pigeons in Cuba since I was eight years old, but I don't have uh, the conditions right now. But in the future, my dream is to have not even a quarter of what you have right now. So let me ask you, do you race pigeons? Yes, I race pigeons also. I race the GHT club and the unit 10 club. The Unit 10 Club, I fly part of Tampa Bay Combine. Okay. And you win? I win, I lose, I win. I don't put as much time as other people. But I, I, I win at least a race a year. Well, I'll tell you what, your pigeons are healthy. All this medicine over here, you have everything you need. I, I believe that if you're going to have pigeons, first you have to learn the diseases. So you can cure them because pigeons, they do have diseases here and there. And uh, yes, they, they catch sicknesses. Like salmonella, 
uh, problems to virus, stuff like that. They got everything. Yeah, but if you have all this medicine and you have knowledge like you do, you can prevent all that. And I see all your patients, they're very healthy. Really, very healthy. So we stay on top of it. Uh, my son does a lot of reading and he knows the medicines also. This is an everyday, uh, he was nice enough to let me come here uh, and just, he did a work and do an interview with him. And uh, let me ask you, do, do you want money? Can you win money? Uh, because I heard, uh, I was interviewing uh, before this gentleman from here, Tito, and he told me that there are some races that you can win money. Some races, but you have to put money into it to make money. Mm. It just doesn't come to here's the money. No. Mm. You have to put a lot of time into it. Mm. You have to have good pictures. Mm. And uh, there is a few people that do win money. But it, if you weigh it for the money that you make, get and for the amount of time that you put into it, mm. there is no money. That's right. You do it because you love it. You're doing it for the sport. You're chasing rainbows. Mm. As far as making money, I don't think there's anybody that can say it to the end of the year. Wow, I made I made X amount of money. Yeah. You know, years yeah. ago, you was able to make a few pennies. Now they tax you. Everything is taxed. Mm. The money you, you win is taxed. They should start taxing the money you lose. Mm. If they tax the money you lose, it'd be much better. You lose more than you win. It costs money to... Um, to run, and run up the road and train the pigeons. Yes, that's right. Because I remember when I used to have the pigeons, we used to go drive 80 miles. Yeah. That's gas. Gas, gas money. money. Gas costs money. Oh, yes. Time costs money. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let me ask you something. What was the most, since we're talking about money, that you ever paid for a single pigeon? I'm pretty lucky as far as pigeons. Huh? <coughs> I don't spend... Every once in a while, I go to an auction and buy a bird for four or five hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. But a lot of my pigeons come to me for free. Mm -hmm. um, people get old down here; they get rid of them. I buy them. I resell them here in my store. At that time, I, I pick out a couple that I like. Um, it's sometimes you pick them according to the bloodline. Sometimes you pick them just because you like them. You know, this one looks nicer than that one. It's just, um, it, it's, um, I would say it's a, it's just in, in the eye, whatever you like. You know, um, it's like going out with women. Some some guys like to go out with redheads, some like to go out with blondes. <laughs> it's all in the eyes. <laughs> well, it's the same thing. Yeah, okay. Uh, I want to ask you, how far do you raise the pigeons? Like, uh, Down the, here in Florida, mm -hmm. um, we go 600 miles. 600 miles? 600 miles. From 100 up to 600, a gradual increase mm -hmm. in mileage. Do you have any 600 mile birds? Uh, yeah. Um, you can get a 600 mile day bird down here. Where When I was up in New York, we couldn't get a day bird. 600 miles in a day. Wow. But here in yeah. Florida, so, um, it's the different. daylight is different. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's a big difference. So you only raise north? We only raise north up here. Okay, but let, let me ask you. But, I, uh, with this year with the virus. Uh -huh, that's what I was going to ask you. Uh, with the virus. We were ready to fly south because then we could stay within the state of Florida. Okay. Down here to, to Key West is, uh, I think it was 285 miles. Okay. Now, we, we, we would have flew south, but um, we have a commercial truck, tractor trailer, that would go north. Now, when I had pigeons before, I had white doves. My white doves, I used to let them go from every point. North, you had south, white, west. You had white pigeons. Yes, I have white. Yeah. Yeah. And you tell people that doves, they're white pigeons. Yeah, white. Yeah, white homeless pigeons, but it's called dove too. You know, yeah, it's, because you're it's from the family of the doves. Yeah. <coughs> it's like saying dog, canine, you know, something like that. So anyway, but my point is, 
I let them go from all the cardinal points, right? Yeah. And they were used to that. But with the home and pitches, with the sport of racing, you only let them go from north. No, and, I, and I let you. Uh, I go to Tampa a lot, so I take them with me to Tampa. Okay. Not that often, but I take them. Okay. Just, uh, you know, to spook them up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, They. I, I figure that it will take them a little longer. Yes. For them to come from the south, because they really they only do train from the north. But once you take them to the south, homing pigeons are very smart. Once you take them to the south, to the south for a while, and then they'll they'll pick it. They'll up. pick it up. Pigeon racing is um, I've been doing it a long time, and um, down here in the state of Florida is altogether different than racing up north. When we raced in New York, we flew uh, southwest. Okay. And um, here we're flying um, northeast. Mm. We try to stay on um, Highway 75. Okay, yeah, 75 all the way to Georgia. We take 75 into Georgia and through Georgia. Okay, so you released from Georgia. What town in Georgia, or what is the farthest in your Georgia you go? All the way through the state of Georgia. Wow. Now, your last race that you did, how many birds were released? Because this, this sport is very wide in the United States. It's just, I don't know why it's not <laughs> more popular. Uh, so, how because many birds? Here's what happened with the uh, racing pigeon theory in the United States. The day the computer um, destroyed this this one. Mm. Years ago, kids um, played in the neighborhood. They came out from school and they played. People had pigeons. People had um, rabbits, chickens in the yard years ago. Today they don't have that. No. I grew up in, in New York City in an area called Master Queens. Uh, every couple of houses there was pigeons on the roof. And the rooftop. I, I, the roof. I have my pigeons in Cuba on the rooftop. I and have them on the roof. I the, had them in the yard. The same. And from my roof I could see like 50 uh, counting yeah. uh, rooftop lofts. A lot of lofts yes. there. We call it Palomares. And huh? um, it, it, it got to be so that people would give you a complaint. You'd have to get rid of them. Yeah. And um, it's the sport just died away. Um, kids are not interested in sports no more. Kids don't play sports. Um, in time to come, uh, you'll lose football, you're going to lose uh, baseball. The kids today, the American kids, don't play sports. They don't want to get their hands dirty. Now, uh, my question was, how many pigeons in a release? Uh, more or less. Each member could send up to 30 pigeons. That's the maximum? The maximum of 30 pigeons per, per member. Wow. So so the release would be how many, like thousands sometimes? No. no? Years ago it was thousands. Yes. Um, we get uh, 1,500 to 2,000 pigeons wow. per release. I, I love Spring Hill. Um, Spring Hill happens to be the capital of racing pigeons. That's right, they call it Little Belgium. Why Little Belgium? Why Little Belgium? Well, where, where I have the pigeons in Unit 10, there's pigeons, I would say, in every second yard. In, in an area called Unit 10, we have, I think there's 96 pigeon people. Um, either they, they, have, they have pigeons, they fly to races, or they're breeders. But there's people that fly to pigeons. And it's like anything else. Um, I'm, in the, I'm in my age bracket of 73 years old. You're 73? I'm 73. Oh. The average guy that has pigeons down here now, uh, not counting the young population of the Spanish people, uh, the Spanish people are much younger. But uh, the older American people that come from all over the United States are averaging the ages of 70 to 90. 
I heard that when the prison people retire, they usually move here to Spring Hill. Well, a lot of guys come down here. Yeah. To, That's to, of New York, you know. New York, Chicago, all the big cities. The reasoning for that is the clubs in the areas where they come from are breaking up because there's no membership no more. Mm. This is the last roundup. So this is why it's called Little Belgium. In Belgium, the sport, and it is said that the sport started in Belgium. Is that true? Um, it's big in Belgium. Mm -hmm. it, it, there's no such thing that it started in Belgium. Mm -hmm. It started all over the world. Well, I know where it started, and I'm going to tell you where it started. If you read the Bible, in the book of Genesis, when there was the flood, what did Noah do? Noah released the pigeon. And the pigeon flew to see there was land. There was no land. The pigeon came back. That was the ancestor of the homing pigeon, which is what's called the rock dog. I studied that. So that is the first instance. So when somebody tell you, no, pigeon racing, it started here, started there. No, started in the Bible. That, that was, what, 5,000 years ago? <laughs> yes. That's, that's good to know because you know... Yeah. The, yeah, the ancestor. That is the ancestor of the homing pitch. It's called the rock dove because they used to live in, in rocks. You know, and then on, on the third time, when they, uh, on the second time when Noah released the pigeon, it came back with the leaf in his mouth. Then uh, later on the third time, it didn't come back no more. You know, so that means stay because there was land because the waters were going down. Yeah. So 600 miles. That is a long way. Yeah. There's a long way to drive in a car. People can't find their way home. <laughs> That's right. They find their way home from there. I believe it's like uh, they find their way by the magnetic field of the earth. Magnetic field. Okay. And even that is changing a lot. With more and more radio um, and television, all kinds of um, electronics, change a lot of it. Yeah. So I, let me wrap it up because I know you got to work. Uh, this store right here, if you are a pigeon fancier, this store has everything. If you live in Florida, this is the store to Well, we, we start the mail order also. They um, call my my phone. Mm -hmm. It's uh, I'll give you my number. It's 727-856-1300. And we send all over the United States. And you can order from here. Yeah, we can. Good to know. Yeah, we send our orders. Great, great. So if you order, Start ordering from here. It, uh, Mr. Tom is very knowledgeable about pigeons. One thing is ordering from online. One thing is coming here. You have to come here and experience it. And if, if you have any questions if about... You call me on my phone and any questions, I'll answer them. Yeah, there you go. He can also answer questions, you know, about if, any disease, any, any kind of medication you want to give to the pigeons, you know. So... Again, I'm here in beautiful Spring Hill, Florida, Little Belgium, and uh, this is Tom. What is the name of your pet shop? Shady Hill Pet. Shady Hill Pets, and it deals with pigeons, but I see you also have some chickens and some birds, but it specializes in pigeons, homing pigeons. They have rollers, high flyers, fantails, uh, white homers. Tom, I'm going to wrap this up. Man, thank you so much for inviting me. I feel it's been a pleasure having you here. I feel like if I know you forever, so from the first time I saw you, you're, you're, you're very good host. Uh, you, you're very welcoming. You know, I, I love this place, especially with all the junk going around in the United States. Uh, I feel here. I, I feel like if I'm we're home, like brothers. I feel, exactly. We're like brothers. When you're a picture guy, everybody's you know, a brother. Everybody's a brother. You're like family, you know. Yeah. Like I say, I feel like if I know you, you know, for a long time. I want to move here, but my wife don't want to. 
Get rid of your wife. Get rid of your wife. No, no, I can't do that. <laughs> That's my baby. I can't do that. We've been married for 30 years. Married 30 years? Yeah, 30 years. Yeah. But, uh, no, I have to honor her. But, hey, guess what? I'm close, man. I'm close. I'm, I will come back here. This is my first time here. I've been wanting to come here for a long time. This is my vacation. Since I'm chasing that dream, I say to my wife, hey, because she, she owns a dream station, I say, hey, why don't we do something? You know, or uh, spring here on the pigeon. She say, yeah, sure, go ahead. You know, thank you, man. It's a pleasure. Bless you. Thank you. Thank and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll come back again. Hey, we are on our way to League Andy's International One Love Challenge in Spring Hill, Florida. And uh, this is one of the, of maybe, uh, this is the biggest love that I've seen, all right? So I'm here with my wife, Yaya. And I'm enjoying this ride. I'm excited. Big Andy is a nice guy. I talked to him on the phone. And uh, I'm just excited. We're excited. All right. Hey, we're here still in the Spring Hill. We're here on Big Andy One Loft Race. I'm here with Siwa. Siwa is the manager of this place. This place is amazing. I mean, they have, look at, they have a loft here and they have a huge loft over there. It's one loft race. And they have that other loft over there. And now, and they even building on that loft. So we're just gonna walk around with Siwa and I'm just gonna ask him a bunch of questions about the race and, and stuff like that. Right there, which is huge. And another loft over here. And look over here, they, this is so big and they adding, they adding to that one. And oh my gosh, look, they got another loft right there. Love there, love there. And that's a loft. That's a loft right there. That's two floors. Okay? Come on, let's go. Okay, so my question to Siwa is, how does it work? Because I know that uh, on the regular races, mm -hmm. like you get uh, a bunch of people together, they all put the birds in the truck, they go to Georgia, for example, mm -hmm then they let them go and all the birds go to the different houses. But here is one love race, so all the birds come here. The so it's, it's about, go ahead. You yeah, you, in this, uh, how it works is you send your baby and we take care of it. You send uh, it's a, a prize in the perch. You just send it to, to us and we rise, uh, we train the, the, the youngster. When it's ready, then we have a four race uh, series. The first one, let's say 150, the second one 200, the third race 250, and the grand final is from 350 to 400 miles is the final, which we paid 100,000 for the first prize. And last year we paid over $350,000 in prizes. So everybody from United States come over, come over here, send pigeons to us, even from uh, Europe, they send us pigeons. Last from year, Europe? Yeah. Wow. Last year we couldn't have received the pigeons from Europe, you, got, you know, because of the COVID and stuff like that, made mm -hmm. the quarantines difficult. But uh, for next year we're planning to receive birds from all over the world. Okay. Wow. Come. Come. okay, so the winner of the race wins a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, actually, wow. the first prize is uh, guaranteed for one hundred thousand. But mm -hmm. here in America we use like a split uh, pr uh, prices pay out uh, in, if two birds come together uh, for example let's say the first price is 100,000 and the second one is 50,000 let's put it as an example which is normally what we do here if two birds come together in the final they are uh, they are uh, seen like two first prizes you know mm. so they split the 100,000 plus the 50,000 combined which is 75 for each you know and then goes on the set, the payments to uh, the hundred position. I think we pay one thousand last year. That's a lot of money. It is. It is. Now let me ask you something. 
For example, if I want to put one on my baby, mm -hmm. right, and give to you, how much do I have to pay? If you bring one baby here, mm -hmm. you need to pay uh, $125 for the purse fee. Oh, it's not bad. Last year we were charging 200 and we decided to go down to 125 this year. Okay. Then that's going to take you uh, to the race. And then when we start training the bird, if it's there at the 100 mile, the 100 mile toast activation race, uh, then you need to pay 300 more to activate it for the races. That's going to take you, you know, to be able to win prizes. Oh, okay. Let me ask you, how about if the bird, you know, dies or uh, a hawk gets them? Okay, or, uh, well, when you send it, you have a couple of times Plenty of time if it's lost here in, by a disease or uh, if, if it gets sick or if a hawk eat it, then you can replace it before the replacing time. Oh, good. But then good. if it's already in the road and you lost it, you know, you yeah. don't have to activate it, but you will lose your perch. Of course. Yeah. But that's why most of the guys don't only send one, you know, you maybe send three, four, just in case uh, you lost one, you know, so you can still in the game. That's fair. That's fair. See, well, I am curious, yeah. okay? How many birds did you have only this lot, more or less? Well, right now, we start accepting birds like three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. so, um, we're really confident that uh, we must have around 600 youngsters already in only three weeks. Um, wow. For this year, we're hoping to receive over 2,000 birds. That's why we're <laughs> doing uh, the extension that you see over there. Yeah. Yeah, we're building 50 more feet to the lab, so it's going to be a total of 250 uh, foot long lot. <laughs> That's a, that can hold like 3,000 years. Right? So, I, I, I'm sorry, uh, I heard you say purchase. So, that is going to be just with purchase or, you know, the... the no, no, it's going to be looking like this. Just, just like this, that. Yeah. yeah, I haven't seen it inside. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah it's, it's a complete lot. So, so uh, we're going to finish it probably in the next two weeks. Um, and we're, we're going to use it for quarantine, you know. Yeah. When we receive the birds, they're going to go over there. Once they, uh, they're good to move, we're going to be moving it to the loft, you know. But, um, yeah, we're excited about this year. Oh, man, it looks good. Yeah, we are seeing in the final race. The final race is here. Everybody comes from all over the world. And uh, really? all the United States, we do a big party here. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. I have to get in contact with you because I want to come. You know? Okay, I, yeah. I, I want to come and film, you know. Um, you know, I've been, I have pigeons since 1968 mm. uh, in Cuba. Yeah. But I was never over there to this scale. Wow. I mean, th this is the biggest love I, <laughs> I have seen with yeah, my, it's like, big over here like physically yeah yeah it's very big it okay is. but i see you have all the love what is that over there and what is that all the love well, those are uh, uh that's those, that love is for the independent breeding okay yeah in this section we can go there and, and oh good yeah, yeah yes great okay so you say these are independent breeders yeah, yeah. can you explain no uh, well each section of this has one pair so you in, in that kind of in that kind of cages, you're never gonna lose the quality of the bird. You know they can fly up and down, and you know get the sun. Uh, really, the, the best shape you can have a bird is in, in cages like this. No, yeah, yeah, this is beautiful because you know it's all uh, open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, how about when it rains? It doesn't. Yeah, yeah. Hey, that's not bad. No. You know, the rain. all that is concrete. So all you guys yeah, yeah. hold it down. Hold it down. You know what I do with my love? I put cat, cat litter. Yeah, okay. I put cat litter and a whole year I don't clean it I'm oh. on, on the floor. Okay. And then in a year, then I go Yeah, but the thing is that you cannot mix water with, you know, with shit. Yeah. Yeah. As long as it, if it's dry, you don't have problem. Yeah, it's very dry. The cat litter makes it yeah. so dry. Yeah, but you get the humidity, it's no good. For the it's a beautiful bird. So basically, yesterday, this, uh, with the hose, you know, are they breeding right now? Yeah, so yeah, they have babies. Do, do you guys breed all around, all year round? Uh, no, when they, uh, this must be the last one, you know? Yeah, because I was gonna say. Because they're done in the Yeah. Too hard, but, uh, you know. Yeah, because me too, I, just, I separated my birds, and uh, I, I put them together maybe December. Okay. You yeah. know, around December. 
Because I, I don't race. I don't race or anything. I just do it for a hobby. Yeah. That, that's a beautiful thing about this, that you can do it for a hobby and yeah, you can do not, it for not a sport. Every, not everybody have the time to race in a club. Yeah. Uh, you know, everybody has work yeah. to do. So mo a lot of people now are starting to move to the one love races because yeah. you just have to uh, perish in your house, you bring the babies and you send it to us and we do the work, you know? I don't have to spend it. <laughs> uh, the, 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 and it's the, money, you know? The, the gas money, man. The gas money exercising the birds well, and all crazy, that, you know? Crazy. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, one love race is the way, man. You know? Because it's, it's, it's definitely... A, no, no, it's a lot of one love races here in America and we're proud to be one of the biggest and more important ones. Yeah. So, but yeah, this a uh, bunch of new One Love races in America and they're getting good support. Yeah. So the sport is growing here in America very quickly. Yes, yes, yes. This is, wow. Oh, you got white ones? <laughs> yeah. I got, I, I got white ones. I got stick -about. Oh, yeah, stick -about yeah, 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 stick -about all white. This bird, man, because uh, I've, uh, in Miami, I used to have a business. Okay. That I used to let the birds go on weddings, you know, okay. funerals, right. graduations, stuff like that. At night time, they will they will come home. Like if I let them go at six o'clock, you go, know, they'll find their way home. At night, you know what I do? I I had a big old light and I put the light from the outside to, to the loft, and so it they was can see it late, and then they'll come, they'll go down. Yeah. You know, yeah, good birds. Yeah, really, really good. I love the the stick of balls. Right? So well, what I so do is right now you're not participating nowhere. No, no, because I just started again. Well, well we want to see you next year here. Uh, yeah? uh, you know what? It's, it's something to think about. Yeah. It's something to think about. I, w I would love to maybe uh, maybe send one bird or two. Yeah, just no. to see how they do, to see how yeah, they yeah. do, man. man. Yeah, but I mean, to see you in action and feeling the sport with that on adrenaline waiting for birds, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know. I'm, see, the th the, here's the thing. In Cuba, I never did that. Okay, uh, they do have it over there, mm -hmm. but me, I grew up just doing it as a hobby. Yeah. So I enjoy it more as a hobby. No, of course. But I, I see both. I see both. I see the adrenaline. I see that it's beautiful to see your bird, you know. But I, I still toss my birds. Yeah, yeah. You know, I toss them far away, come back, you know. You enjoy so, that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, have, I have the old ones. I have, I have Trenton's, which is since uh, 1983. No, no. 1883 is the old, they say it's one of the oldest birds. Yeah, yeah. I got Trentons, I got Delbert Jensen's, Stickleball, um, I got Huben, Middleman, uh, Gavin, Wegg. I, I got all like. Uh, you got a little bit of something. Uh, yeah, oh, everything. Yeah, a little yeah, bit of everything. Yeah, I got a little of everything. But the Stickleball, the white ones, I have it all on one. But this is not about me, man. This is about your amazing loft over here. Well, that's begun. It's not mine. Mine is in my house, you know. Oh, uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, nice installations that he has. Uh, he imports really good birds. He's yeah, but to work here, man, and then it's like, I mean, if you're a pigeon lover, yeah, I, I would love enjoy, to enjoy, work enjoy here. Enjoy it, enjoy it, yes. Yeah. You pigeons here, you go home, that's you got pigeons. That's why we come to a Spring Hill. <laughs> Everything in Spring Hill is about pigeons, you know, so uh, it's nice. And you, you, uh, get together with too many people that love the sport. Uh, we go drink coffees, talk about pigeons, talk about races. We really enjoy it over here. Yeah, they call Spring Hill Little Belgium. Little Belgium. Little